On the agenda is um, a walkthrough uh, of uh, H244, Act relating to authorizing uh, the natural organic reduction of human remains. And um, we will welcome Katie McGlynn uh, um, from Ledge Council and for the first time this year. And um, good to see you, Katie, wherever you may be. I don't <laughs> see you on my screen, but that doesn't mean anything <laughs> at this point. Um, good afternoon. It's nice there to she see is. you. Great. Okay. <laughs> well, are you ready to go? I sure am. Yeah. Nice to see everyone. Okay. Um, yours. So let me ask is, do you prefer to have the bill pulled up on the screen or do you prefer to just use your own devices to see the bill? We generally put it up on the screen. Put you the, like it on the screen. Okay. Yes, that works for everyone. <laughs> okay. Let me get ready to do that. Before I do that, um, let me just give you a little introduction to this bill. So as you'll notice, this is quite a long bill. Um, and the main purpose of the bill is to incorporate um, the concept of natural organic reduction, which means the conversion of human remains into soil at an accelerated pace um, into our statutes. Um, however, if you've had a chance to read through the bill, you'll notice that this does more than just that. This also, in a lot of respects, is a maybe a cemetery cleanup bill. There's a lot of terminology that was inconsistent and as the bill was being put together, there was an effort made to, to um, have the more consistency across, a, uh, across the terminology. So this bill draws from three different chapters in statute. Two of them are in the same title, Title 18. Two of them are in Title 26, which is our professional responsibility chapter um, for obvious reasons, because we're kind of creating a, a new um, a new type of profession that would need to be licensed under under the way this bill is structured. Um, and because we're, we're um, making changes across different subchapters and chapters, they were probably written at different times and therefore they use um, slightly different language that needed um, some cleaning up. So you'll see that a lot of the bill um, we're making one or two changes in a section, and those changes aren't necessarily related to natural organic reduction. They're related to cleaning up that terminology. And I can give you a few examples. Um, one is that the term burial ground is used um, interchangeably with cemetery. Burial ground is not a defined term in statute unless we're talking about a natural burial ground, which is a defined term. So an effort was made in this draft to use the word cemetery instead of burial ground where that appears. Another example is there was a lot of um, discrepancy across the three different chapters, um, whether a, a, a crematory was crematory, um, a crematory establishment, crematorium, so there was an effort made to use one consistent term throughout um, the three chapters at play here. So you'll see that that is some of the change that's happening. Um, and I'm happy to flag those for you. And if you feel like we're, those are kind of bogging us down in our walk through those more technical changes, I can, I can speed up. So if there are no questions so far, I will pull up the document. Can we, can everyone see the document? Yes, I'm seeing that, it's great. So what I might do is fast forward us in the bill to page, um, let's see, 16, and then I'm gonna walk us back to the beginning of the bill. Um, but because we're talking about three different chapters in statute, um, the bill is organized um, in, in order of the statute number. However, all of the definitions that sort of govern the changes that are being made are halfway through the bill. And I think it makes sense to start with the definition so we all have sort of a common understanding of what, of what we're talking about. So I'm gonna fast forward for the moment. I'm on page 16 and this is this section 8 is the start of a new chapter before um, before the language um, 
with the ellipses around cemeteries, we were in a different chapter. So this is a new chapter. And this chapter um, has all of the controlling definitions. And you'll see in the other chapters that are being um, amended, we're referring back to these definitions. So that's why I think it makes sense to start here. Um, so we have um, some language that isn't being changed. There is a new definition of alkaline hydrolysis, meaning the reduction of human remains to bone fragments and essential elements in a hydrolysis facility using heat pressure, water, and base chemical agents. And there is also a companion definition of an alkaline hydrolysis facility, meaning a structure, room, or other space in a building or structure containing one or more hydrolysis vessels to be used for alkaline hydrolysis. And we'll see this term again used um, in the definition of cremation. So um, we have a definition of cemetery, and it's an existing definition, but you'll notice that we're using the term permanent disposition instead of disposition permanently. This is sort of um, a change that you'll see throughout this whole bill that we're, again, trying to use common phrases. So the phrase permanent disposition is sort of the, the um, phrase of choice that's being used for throughout. And there's an addition here. Currently, it says that a cemetery means a plot of ground used or intended to be used for the burial or permanent disposition of the remains of human dead in a grave, mausoleum, columbarium, a vault, and this adds a scattering garden or other receptacle. And we do have a definition of scattering garden later on. In subdivision five, there's just an editorial change. Um, sub, subdivision six, columbarium, again, um, we're using the phrase permanent disposition, and you'll see that we've struck through cremated. Uh, the reason is this, if we're not specifying um, how uh, human remains um, were processed, for lack of a better term, um, then using permanent disposition as a broader term and would include um, the use of um, natural organic reduction in addition to cremation here. Um, so that's why a, a broader term than just cremation was used there. No changes in subdivision seven, subdivision eight, cremated remains. So this is where we refer back to the alkaline hydrolysis. So this definition states that, that cremated remains means uh, the remains of a deceased person after incineration in a crematory establishment or decomposition in an alkaline hydrolysis facility. Both processes would um, be considered cremation. And you'll see that's reflected again in subdivision nine on line five. And also we're, add we're adding um, scattering garden in here also. So cremation means reducing the remains of a deceased person by the use of retorts or alkaline hydrolysis to cremated mm -hmm. remains and the disposal thereof of a columbarium niche uh, mausoleum grave scattering garden or any other manner not contrary to law. In subdivision 10, the term here had been uh, a crematory, and you'll note that I added establishment after it. That's because we had different terms used across the three chapters. This is an effort to be using a consistent term across the three chapters. Uh, no changes in subdivisions 11, 12, 13. And then we have some changes at the end of this section. So as I mentioned earlier, this bill, really the main focus of this bill is the natural organic reduction. So our working definition means the contained accelerated conversion of human remains to soil. And then we're also referencing a facility, a natural organic reduction facility means a structure, room or other space in a building or real property where natural organic reduction of a human body occurs. And you'll notice that this um, sort of mirrors to the extent it can the definition of a crematory establishment. Um, and then in subdivision six, again, we're um, trying to use broader language uh, in line seven than just cremated to account for the fact that there might be other processes um, by which 
human remains are, are processed after death. And then we have um, the definition of scattering garden, which I referred to earlier, means a designated area in a cemetery for the removal of human remains from their container for the purpose of scattering the remains in a lawful manner. And then we have no change to subdivision 18. So those are sort of the working definitions of what you'll see throughout the three chapters. It brought us to the middle of the bill. So now I'm gonna bring us back to the beginning of the bill. And now that we've sort of had a chance to go through the language or the terminology. And I know this is a bit um, dense, just in length alone. So if you have a question that I'm not getting to, please let me know. Okay. Are there, any, are there any questions at this time? I can't see anyone. Just Representative Kalaki has his hand up. <laughs> okay. Representative Kalaki, please. Um, hello, Katie, and thank you for work on this. Um, I, I find this bill very compelling, and uh, I'm interested um, how we've, we've put this kind of organic process that is speeded up is the same as cremation, which is body is incinerated. And mm -hmm. wh why not have a distinction? Or I, if I understand right, you put the, those sort of together as one process, is that correct? Not as one process, but at, in the rights that a director of a facility would have in terms of, we're next gonna look at um, the, the transit permits. So in terms of the type of permits that somebody would need to, um, to move, to transport a body, um, the type of contracts a director could enter into um, with a family, for example, to handle the remains, um, the type of license that a person would need to get um, is you know, similar in amount and process than the type of license. So it's not that the, the two processes are the same. It's more that they're being um, treated with parity in terms of the rights and, and duties of the directors and the facilities. And, um, you know, the, whether the remains um, were reduced through cremation or through natural organic um, reduction, um, how the remains could be maybe scattered in a scattering um, garden would be treated similarly, if that makes sense. And, and, and my, just my second question, and then I know there's a lot to go on this bill. Why, why was it necessary to add scattering garden into statute? What? My honest answer is I, I, I can't recollect. This bill um, was introduced in the previous biennium and so most of my work on it dates back about three years now. So I, I really can't relect, uh, recollect the, the specific rationale or if the sponsor requested it or if there was another reason. But it, it aligns with where any cremated ashes could be scattered as well. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, Katie. It does look like there's a hand up. Oh, I don't see it. Who's? That's uh, JP. Yeah, okay, JP. Good. I'm glad you spoke up. Please, the mic is yours. Um, I just <clears throat> want to take us a, a minute, if I can, to go back to the scattering garden. Um, just so I understand exactly what this is. My, my initial interpretation of the term for the place scattering garden would be or is a place allocated, I, I guess, somewhere in the cemetery where somebody could take their remains that had been cremated and scatter them in a scattering garden. And, and without going to any technicality, that'd be a yes or no answer. Is, is that correct? That is also my understanding, yes. Okay, and that's what I anticipated. That's why I said yes or no. So having anticipated that and having you confirm it, and this, this has bothered me a little bit, obviously. Um, somebody could take their family 
members ashes scatter it into this place along with or on top of other family <laughs> members ashes or is it a, a specific little plot in that scattering garden that you get and, and that's you can see what that's bugging me a little bit it's bothered me. yeah I, I hear the question and I think that might be a better question for some of the witnesses, how how scattering gardens are, are okay. managed, whether it's a, a more of a communal area or if it is individual plots. I the the language as drafted in the bill does not address that issue, but it doesn't mean it couldn't be addressed if the committee chooses to weigh in. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. There's, there's one more hand out. I'm sorry. Representative uh, Angel has her hand up. Um, I'm not sure. Thank you, Representative Murphy. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if this is a question or just a comment that section six regarding fetal remains really disturbs me. And um, I, I would have to really look at this in depth, but um, the fact that permission is needed from only one parent, if the parent is competent, found to be competent, is in here somewhere. And that just, yeah, permission shall be obtained from one of the parents, if competent, for disposition in all cases where a funeral director is not involved. I, I don't know. I think that opens up some ethical questions for me, ethical and moral questions. So I'm just going to, I guess, leave that hanging for now because I don't really want to get into the particulars of it at this moment. Thank you. So we haven't quite gotten there yet, but I'll make sure that I'll, I'll go through that in detail when we get to that. And that's existing law. There are amendments to it, as you noted, um, but that, that is existing law and I'll go through it so the committee can, can take a look and weigh in when when we get there. So I'm gonna Sorry, go back. I realized that we were um, not discussing the whole bill that we were just taking certain parts of it. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I started in the middle to make sure we all had a kind of common vernacular with the definitions because the bill doesn't start with the definitions. It just cross references them. So now that we've sort of gone through the definitions, I'm heading back to the beginning of the bill to go through the different sections. So I'll start here. Um, so we're starting with our first uh, of the three chapters, which is the death, burial, and autopsy chapter. Um, and you'll see that we're adding a definition section. There wasn't a definition section before. But you'll also notice that all of the definitions are cross-referencing the definitions we just went over, which is why I wanted to start in the middle of the bill. So you saw those definitions to begin with. So we've gone over those definitions already. And then we start moving into existing law. So this first section, existing law, um, pertains to permits for the removal of bodies um, cremation and in, um, in, the, in order to ensure this idea of, of parity between cremation and natural organic reduction that's been added to the heading as well. And then also we have um, information about the waiting period here and investigation into the circumstances of death. So the first subsection has to do with a burial transfer permit. In existing law, um, it directs that it, a dead body is not to be buried, entombed, or removed, or otherwise disposed of without this permit that's issued and signed by the municipal court clerk, a county clerk, or deputy clerk for the municipality or town or in which the um, body is located, and a funeral director licensed in Vermont, an owner or designated manager of a licensed crematory establishment. So again, we're making that change to have the consistent terminology or the natural organic reduction facility. Again, we're adding it in this parity between how we're treating crematory establishments and um, natural organic reduction facilities. Um, so those are the individuals. 
And then we have a similar change in subdivision three. This directs that a funeral director um, or a, a crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility in Vermont that's registered to perform the removals of the body may issue a burial transit permit uh, for any municipality or unorganized town or gore at any time, including during normal business hours. So again, there's this idea of, of parity between other providers of these services. In subsection B, um, we have some sort of editorial changes by flipping um, the, the no here and putting the negative over here on line 12. Uh, but it states that an operator of a crematory establishment shall not cremate or allow the creation of a human body. And an, similarly, an operator of a natural organic reduction facility, facility shall not process or allow the processing of a human body until at least 24 hours following the death of the decedent. Um, and so again, if it's not underlined, it's existing law, but it, um, the, the change that's happening here again is um, either to make the language consistent or in the case of the natural organic reduction facility to create that parity as to who, as to which providers can do what. Um, then we go on to have some language about communicable diseases. So we can't um, process a body until at least 24 hours following the death, uh, unless the person died of a communicable disease, then a health department uh, rule orders require order, excuse me, a rule or order requires the cremation or natural organic reduction to occur prior to the end of that period. So it could be that if there's a communicable disease, then it makes sense for the body to be um, processed within a smaller time frame than the 24 hour waiting period. If the attorney general or state's attorney requests the delay of a cremation or natural organic reduction, again, that idea of parity and um, types of services, uh, based on reasonable belief that the cause of death might have been due to other than accidental or natural causes, the cremation or natural organic reduction is to be de delayed upon request. And subsection C, the person who's in charge of the body is not to release for cremation or natural organic reduction the body of a person who died in Vermont until the person in charge has received a certificate from the chief regional or assistant medical examiner that the medical examiner has made a personal inquiry into the cause and manner of death and is satisfied that no further examination or judicial inquiry is necessary. Again, this is all existing law, except for where we're kind of creating that sense of parity between the types of services. Upon request of a funeral director, the person who's in charge of the body or the operator of a crematory establishment or a natural organic reduction facility, the chief medical examiner shall issue either a cremation or natural organic reduction certificate after the medical examiner has completed the autopsy. And the certificate is to be retained by either the crematory establishment operator or the natural redu organic reduction facility um, as applicable for a period of three years. And that the person requesting cremation or natural organic reduction is to pay the department a fee of $25. In subdivision D for all uh, commissions or natural organic reductions requested for the body of a person who died outside of the state, the operator of either crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility is to do the following before they can proceed. Um, and then we sort of have a list here at the top of page five, subdivision A and B, and you'll notice um, that on line one, the term permanent disposition was chosen instead of cremation as a broader term to cover um, um, more ways to, to process the remains than just cremation. So it's supposed to be more of an um, umbrella statement or um, term than just cremation. Could, could I ask a question? Your vice chair is, is muted, I think. Chip, you're muted. Oops. 
Yes, you're still you're still muted. Who is that speaking? I can't see you on my screen. Who's asking to ask a question? Um, my name is Chris Palermo. Um, okay, Chris. I'm yes. the Vermont Funeral Directors Association. I'm just looking for a part, point of clarification because I'm a little confused by this particular statute or piece of the statute. Um, I understand the process in Vermont where you would get a Vermont medical examiner's permit for both cremation or natural organic uh, reduction. Um, for somebody that is out of state, um, getting a medical examiner's permit, let's say in New Hampshire, where they don't recognize um, NOR as a, a means of disposition, how would that work? Is this going to pertain just to Vermont deaths? Or are you indicating that if Maine or New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts wanted to come to Vermont to use a facility, that they would need to get a medical examiner's permit there? But if it's not a form of disposition, how would they be able to issue a medical examiner's permit? I think that's a, a great question. I think it would be appropriate for the committee to hear um, from the Department of Health and from the Chief Medical Examiner as to whether they think this piece is operable. Um, but I think it's worth flagging for further discussion, certainly. Sure. I, and that's the only reason I bring it up. And I, I have talked with um, the Chief Medical Examiner, uh, Elizabeth Bundock, a little bit about this. So I think she and I've sent her uh, the um, copy of the bill. So when you reach out to her, she's somewhat familiar with the, with the language. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Katie. Okay. So we've made it. We've made it through one section so far. <laughs> um, and now, oops, we, it appears, um, Vice Chair, that you have uh, another oh. question from a witness, I believe. I would ask that the witnesses hold their questions for now. Um, this is a long bill to get through, and uh, we will get to you uh, as soon as we can. I appreciate that. And I'd like to continue the walkthrough. Okay. So we're on section three and this section again, existing, existing language uh, about a certificate that's furnished to a family and we're still talking about the burial transit permits. Um, it governs um, the death certificate being filed with the person issuing the burial transit permit. Um, so I'm, the change is in the second sentence, the certificate is to be filed with the person issuing a burial transit permit obtained by the person who has charge of the body, existing language, before such dead body shall be buried and tombed or removed. And so this again changes it to have, um, to be uh, the body before permanent di uh, disposition or removal. And again, this is meant to have sort of a, a, a broader terminology, a broader term, um, instead of um, more specific terms for, for how we um, handle remains. The next section, we're still talking about permitting, removal um, permits. Um, and we're making a similar change here. So if you look down at the bottom of this section, there is language that um, talks about a permit for burial or entombment. And again, um, a, a broader term was used on line 10 of permanent disposition. <clears throat> and you'll see on line 11 that the phrase burial ground was removed. As I mentioned earlier, the statute doesn't contain um, a definition of burial ground. It, only a natural burial ground would be the defined term. So um, the idea here is to reference a, a cemetery and not use this um, phrase that's not defined in statute. The next section, section five. Um, Can I? We're, we're still, oops. Here, Triana? Yes. It's uh, Representative Murphy. Yes, you have a question. I do. And just looking back at that, and again, we can file this for um, more information later if this is not a good point to stop and discuss it. But I do have a concern about striking burial ground if we're looking at some um, in, uh, 
early ancestors spaces that may not be properly defined as cemeteries? I'm just curious if it's something that's dealt with where there could be ancestral remains and places that are considered burial grounds to those um, who are connected to it, but that aren't official cemeteries. And I'm just curious of an impact if we remove this language. I, I had the same thought myself, uh, Representative Murphy, but I, what I would ask is that that be a part of our committee discussion and that we continue Absolutely. to make a note of Absolutely. that and uh, we'll continue with the walkthrough. Thank you. And if that's a particular concern, which it sounds as though it is, it might make sense for the committee to at least consider um, what a definition of burial ground might be and whether they want to add one to kind of capture that. Right now, it's sort of a, a term without a meaning, except as related to a natural burial ground. So um, I, I think that could easily be added to the definition section and um, maybe we could flag it and, and continue to discuss how to treat that term. But you'll see throughout the bill, um, often it's not a list like this with serious cemetery burial ground, it might just reference a burial ground, for example, in the chapter on cemeteries. And the term in this bill has been changed to cemeteries, but perhaps it's the committee's choice to, um, to address that a different way. Um, so you'll see that it will kind of continue to come up as we walk through this bill. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're having, uh, in section five, there is a similar change um, where we're using, again, sort of broader language of permanent disposition versus talking about the um, particular way that a body is, is disposed, whether it's buried, cremated, entombed. So um, you'll see on line 15, um, we're replacing Sorry, we're replacing the phrase where such bodies to be buried, cremated, and tombed with the location of the body's permanent disposition to have that sort of broader terminology. Okay. Disposition of remains, and we're also talking about um, permits. And this, I believe, is where the question came up earlier. So this is existing language, but we do go in and amend, amend it for the purpose of including um, natural organic reduction. So the existing language is that the fetal remains shall be disposed of by burial or cremation unless released to an educational institution for scientific purposes or disposed of by the hospital or is directed by the attending physician in a manner that will not create a public health hazard. So the change that's happening here is that um, the fetal remains um, could be disposed by natural organic uh, reduction instead of burial or cremation. So it, it, it adds um, a, an additional manner of, of handling the remains. Um, and then the change on line six is, um, you know, a, a, a grammatic change. Um, and then on line 11, you'll see um, the word final is struck. Um, the phrase had been final disposition, and this is one of the places where we're changing to permanent disposition or the proposal is to change to permanent disposition to have more consistent terminology um, throughout the chapters. Okay. And then in subsection B, um, again, we're amending existing law when the funeral director is involved or when the fetal remains are to be privately buried or disposed of by a crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility, the funeral director or other person taking charge of the remains shall obtain from the hospital or physician the disposition permit portion of the report and shall revert, revert it to the sexton or other person having care of the cemetery tomb vault crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility. So again, where we're referencing a, a crematory establishment, we're also um, bringing in the natural organic reduction facility as an option. Um, and then you'll also note that the word commercial um, is struck on 13. And um, honestly, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to recollect the purpose for that. My guess is that it was to be consistent. I don't know if there are any non-commercial crematory establishments. So that should, now that we're 
talking about it, I think we should at least flag that as um, maybe an item to make sure um, the committee is comfortable with that um, with that change. Okay. Now, we're moving into section seven. This is a subchapter um, of the first, we're still in the first chapter that we had been looking at here, but we're now in a subchapter on the rights of family members, um, other interested persons, funeral directors, operators of a crematory establishment, and also um, the of natural organic reduction facilities. And so this section, has quite a bit to do um, with who who um, has the authority to make a, a decision about the disposition of human remains. And you'll see on line 14, there's an ellipses. Um, that means that there's language missing that isn't being amended. It's existing law that isn't being amended, so it's not shown in the bill. But that's a list of the order in which um, persons have, right, have a right to make a decision um, about the disposition of remains. Um, so we don't have um, persons, you know, one through eight. Um, once we get to nine, subdivision nine, it's the funeral director, crematory establishment operator, and then that sense of parity, the operator of a natural organic reduction facility with custody of the body. In subsection C, if the disposition of the remains of a decedent is determined under subdivision A9 of this section, what we just looked at here, and the funeral director, the crematory establishment operator, or the operator of the natural organic reduction facility has cremated or processed the remains is applicable, the funeral director, crematory establishment operator, or operator of the natural organic reduction facility shall retain the remains for three years and if there's no interested party um, listed in that list that we omitted, one through eight, um, of this section that claims the decedent's remains after three years, then the funeral director, establishment operator, or the operator of the natural organic reduction facility is to arrange for the permanent disposition versus the final disposition using that um, common terminology, excuse me, terminology. Um, of the remains. And you'll note that on line eight, this phrase, the cremated is struck. So now we're just saying disposition of remains. So it doesn't necessarily mean under this proposal that the remains would have to be cremated. In subdivision A2, we're saying notwithstanding what we've just said, a funeral director, crematory establishment operator, the operator of a natural organic facility may determine that the unclaimed remains no longer cremated because there are, this anticipates other ways to dispose of remains. Um, so the remains of a deceased veteran will be interred at the Vermont Veterans Memorial Cemetery, if, and then we have a list that applies. Um, so again, this is existing law, but we're adding in um, the natural organic facility everywhere that a crematory establishment is already in law. Um, so I will maybe not read through each of those. Um, and then in subdivision C, uh, the funeral director, crematory establishment operator, operator of a natural organic facility um, has confirmed with the Office of Veterans Affairs that the deceased veteran is eligible to be interned at the um, veteran cemetery. So. Again, existing law, but it's adding in that layer of the natural organic um, production facility where the um, crematory facility is also mentioned. Excuse me. <clears throat> Next in subdivision, subsection D, if the disposition of remains of a decedent is determined under A10, the office of the chief medical examiner is to contract with a funeral director, crematory establishment operator, or the operator of a natural organic uh, reduction facility to cremate or process the remains of the decedent as applicable. So again, that parity with referencing both types of providers. 
if the cremation in subdivision 2A, line 16, if the cremation or the natural organic reduction um, of the decedent is arranged and paid for um, by DCF. So um, there's uh, language in DCF um, that if a, if a person, um, if, if the burial expenses are covered by the state um, through GA. Um, and then we're saying, we're getting rid of the word cremation as to describe expenses on line 18, so that that kind of broadens up the type of, of services available, that the remains could be treated through cremation or um, natural organic reduction. Katie, uh, we, yep. can we take a question from Representative Kalaki, who has a stand up right oh, now? Oh, okay. Please, John. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chip and Katie. Um, I just, I, 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 there's a lot of dense information, so I'm trying to keep up with you, but if I could just get clarity, um, last session or last biennium, this committee um, did pass a bill and the House approved and the Senate did and the governor signed it for the disposition of unclaimed veterans remains, <coughs> going being guaranteed that they would have a place at the veterans hospital. I mean, a veteran cemetery. I just want to make sure that the, the time frame of that bill not, or that law is congruent with this in, in the disposition of the remains. So I didn't staff that bill, so I'm not um, completely yeah. familiar with it. I probably, did, was it Tucker that staffed it? I don't know if the committee remembers. I can check in with Tucker and run the language by him. Um, were I to guess, um, probably the change had was somewhere in this section. Um, you'll note that this is a 2000, uh, 2000, well, 2021 bill, um, meaning that when the statutes were pulled in from the database to draft this bill, it was the first year of the biennium and it wasn't updated in 2022 because the bills can stay on the wall for two years. So if this committee has made changes to this section, um, we will have to pull in the most recent um, language from the database that was passed in 2021 when the committee takes this bill up to amend it, if that makes sense to you. Yes, it was not in the, we did this, we passed this bill not in the first Right. year of this biennium it was in the last biennium oh so I, so I think you're saying that this is would account for that if it's already in statute then it would account for that i mean the okay. correct language would be pulled in from the database if it was let's say it was a 2020 bill yeah. um and this was drafted for 2021 then the database would have pulled in the changes that were made in 2020 okay thank you so at this time, I would like to uh, stop for a second here. Uh, it's obvious that we will not um, get even close to the completion of this walkthrough uh, between now and <laughs> the next 50 minutes uh, when we were due on the floor. So um, my question is, um, committee, can we waive a break uh, until just before floor uh, to continue uh, taking? Uh, is that yes? <laughs> Three o'clock? Like a 10 of three break? Yes. I think you said before floor, not before four. You said yeah, before floor, yes, yes, right. Yes. That's a good thing. Yeah, I think you're getting yep. to do that from the room. We're willing to wait till 10 of three. Okay. Now, <clears throat> my other question is to our witnesses. Uh, you have come here today expecting to testify. Uh, can I get an idea of whether or not your testimony uh, will be relevant to the first 10 pages that we've walked through so far? Um, and or if you are able to come back at a later date when we uh, have more time to uh, consider this bill. Um, yes, uh, Chris. Um, so yes to both uh, both questions. Um, and um, I just want to say that the Vermont Funeral Directors Association is very supportive of this um, particular type of disposition and allows Vermont families uh, another choice. And we look forward to partnering uh, with folks as we walk down the path of, of providing this type of disposition. Um, in terms of pages one through 10, um, I just wanted to point out that the Vermont Veterans Memorial Cemetery um, 
they're the only cemetery in the state of Vermont that uh, is has jurisdiction under Act 250. And um, I'm on the cemetery advisory board and work closely with Bob Burke, who's the director of the cemetery. So I reached out to him for clarification. Um, their Act 250 permit allows for earth burial, burial of casketed remains in a crypt or the earth burial of cremated remains, but does not allow the provision for scattering ashes or now natural organic reduction. And so to have that information in this um, bill um, may lead people to a false sense that, that under the current regulations of the cemetery, that this may be an option. Now that, not to say that if the cemetery um, applies for an Act 250 amendment to allow for scattering of ashes, green burials, and to be able to um, accommodate natural organic reduction, um, that may be somewhere down the, down the path, but I don't wanna to speak to that, but Currently, that's not an option because of their Act 250 permit. Very so, good. That's a very good point, Chris. I, I we appreciate that. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, that's something we will uh, take part of the uh, uh, in, in future con uh, uh, future um, uh, discussion. Uh, Katie, is it okay with you to uh, uh, go for a little bit longer? Uh, let me ask. Uh, uh, Patrick Haley is here. Yes. Patrick, are you here? Yes. Patrick is here. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, same question to you. Um, is, uh, would your testimony testimony be relevant to the first 10 pages? If you'd like to make a contribution, a brief contribution right now, uh, and would you available, be available to come back at another date? Um, I'll answer the latter first. Uh, yes, I am uh, available to come back at a later date. Okay. And I'm just here to answer any questions. And the Vermont Cemetery Association is in favor of natural organic reduction. Great, very good, thank you. And we have Carolyn, uh, uh, say your last name for me, Carolyn. It's Mazes. Mazes, it is, okay, uh, well, welcome. And uh, I know you had a question before that I put off, but um, the same questions to you, um, would, would your testimony be relevant to the first 10 pages? Uh, and uh, we would welcome a comment at this point. And uh, would you be available to come back at another date? Yes and yes, um, and I was just, planning to make a comment about the question of okay. transferring across state lines. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll do some further research on that um, if we come back at a later date. Um, but just as a point, this many bodies have been transferred from states that do not currently recognize natural organic reduction to the state of Washington successfully um, and have not required additional certifications from our medical examiners. But it does come down to the individual state law. Okay. Great, that is good to know. I, that's what you wanted to contribute before I take it. Okay, thank you. So um, committee, um, we will continue with the walkthrough right now with Katie uh, until 10 of three. Is that um, agreeable with everyone? Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. Katie, back to you. Okay. Um, so let's see, we were on D, um, yes. Um, so this is the language, um, chief medical examiner language, that the disposition of remains of a decedent as determined under A-10, which is the, um, refers back to the officer of chief medical examiner, um, they may contract with the funeral director, crematory establishment operator, or operator of a natural organic reduction facility to cremate or process the remains as applicable in subdivision 2A, if the cremation or natural organic reduction of the decedent. Um, oh, I already covered this. I'm sorry, this is the GA um, um, when DCF is, is covering the expenses. So on line 18, you'll see the, the term cremation in front of expenses and is it removed um, to open up the type of service available. Um, same thing is happening at the top of page 11 on line one, instead of if the cremation of the decedent and now says if the permanent disposition. Again, that's a, a broader term. Um, same thing is happening in subdivision three on line five, instead of specifying that we're talking about the cremated remains, we're just talking about the remains shall be returned to the office of the chief medical examiner. 
And on line nine, um, a consistent change instead of final disposition using permanent disposition. Also on line nine is removing the word cremated before remains. So we sort of have more services available. Um, let's see, subdivision four, um, notwithstanding any provisions, the office of the chief medical examiner may determine that un um, claimed remains, we're getting rid of cremated again to open up the services of a de deceased veteran shall be interred at the Vermont Veterans Memorial Cemetery. I take it that this is an area that we might need further um, uh, testimony on, so I might just skip by this for the time being now that we've flagged um, that we have to figure out what's happening with the Act 250 permit for the veteran cemetery. Um, okay, so I'll move us right along to section 5228. Uh, this is forfeiture. Uh, an individual um, who's recognized under the previous section, that's the section where it lists the order of who can make decisions about um, a disposition, um, they forfeit that right. If the individual is identified by law, a law enforcement agency as a person of interest and likely to be prosecuted or is under prosecution for first or second degree murder or voluntary manslaughter in connection with the decedent's death. Um, so that's all existing law. What we're doing um, in the latter half of this subdivision is um, saying if the status of the investigation or the prosecution is known to the funeral director, crematory establishment operator, or operator of a natural organic reduction facility, um, again, having that, that parity, um, then um, except if that prosecution is not pursued or the individual is acquitted of the alleged crime before the remains are disposed of, the individual shall regain that right. Okay, cost of disposition. So the cost for disposition of remains and funeral goods or services shall be borne by the decedent's estate subject to the limits for insolvent <laughs> estates. I'm gonna skip by that because we don't have a change in that section in that um, sentence. The changes in the second sentence, nothing in this subchapter sub shall be construed to require a funeral director, crematory establishment operator, or operator of a natural organic reduction facility to provide goods or services for which there is no payment. So again, the same um, sort of rights of not having to provide those without payment, uh, provide services or goods without payment. Uh, in section 5230, we cover the rights of a funeral director, operator of a crematory establishment or a natural organic reduction facility. Um, so the terminology is um, just being updated for that um, parity that we've been talking about over and over again in each section. And line nine, again, replacing final disposition with permanent disposition to be consistent. And you'll see that again on line 12. You'll see it again on line 13. And then on line 20, there's language that a director of it, or an operator. So we're again, sort of using broader language. Um, if a director or operator has actual knowledge that there is no surviving member, guardian or individual appointed to arrange for the disposition of the decedent's remains, um, again, we have the same change in subdivision B using the terms uh, director and operator versus um, having specificity, um, trying to open it up for more services. And then in 5231, um, there's language here um, about civil actions. So you'll see on line 14, the same change we've been seeing throughout, changing final disposition to permanent disposition. So we have that one sort of common phrase throughout. In subdivision D1, a funeral director or crematory establishment operator or operator of a natural organic reduction facility may refuse to accept bodily remains to inter or otherwise dispose of bodily remains or to complete the arrangements for the fight for, excuse me, the permanent disposition until such time as the court issues. Um, so again, making changes consistent with other changes you've seen so far. Okay, so 
subdivision two, again, you're seeing similar changes to what we've seen before, um, using the term director and operator to kind of have a, a broader um, language and the type of services that can be provided and using permanent disposition versus final disposition. Um, and you'll note on line three, um, removing the word crematory before operator again. Um, and you'll see that on line six. And on line seven, again, the use of final disposition versus, excuse me, permanent disposition versus final disposition. You'll see um, the same changes in subsection E, updating um, to have broader language around director and operator and on line 15 using permanent disposition versus final. Um, on line um, 19 in subsection F, um, just grammatical change, uh, capitalizing probate division. Um, and that brings us to page 16. Um, and we have language here, again, consistent with, with what you've already been seeing, that a funeral director, crematory establishment operator, operator of a natural organic reduction facility shall not be subject to civil liability or subject to disciplinary action for carrying out the disposition of human, excuse me, of remains if he or she relied on good faith on the funeral service contract or authorization. Um, or for following the instructions of an individual who the director or operator reasonably believes are believed held the right to disposition. So again, existing law, but having that sense of parity with the protections um, that are already given to the operator of a crematory establishment. So that brings us to the end of the first of the three chapters that sort of deals with this topic. Um, you'll be happy to know we've already covered this next section eight. This was the definition. So I'm going to just move right past that. Okay. And that brings us to section nine, perpetual care funds. Um, and here you'll see we're adding the phrase scattering garden. So just to give you a little bit more context here, um, this section states that an agency that's engaged in the cemetery business is to have the right to acquire uh, by gift, devise, otherwise, land or property of every name in nature and to set aside surplus funds to be held in trust as a perpetual care fund. The income is to be used according to the directions of the trust where such directions are given, where there's no specific directions or where, um, or where given and the purpose is incapable of performance or there's a surplus of income after the directions of the trust have been um, performed um, to use the same for the purpose of building, repairing, maintaining, adorning, and beautifying buildings or parts thereof, fences, graves, vaults, mausoleums, monuments, walks, cemetery lots, grounds, scattering gardens, drives, or avenues. Um, so that's how you can use um, additional funds and scattering gardens is added there. Section 10, um, records available to the public. So in this um, line 17 and 18, the existing language is that the record of burials, interments, and cremations shall be reasonable and open to the public. Um, so this language of um, a record of permanent disposition of human remains is broader language that doesn't specify um, how the human um, remains were handled. Section 11. Vice Chair, I see we have a question from a member of the committee. Would you, you like me to stop or should I keep going? Yes, Representative, uh, Representative Kalaki, question. Yes, thank you. Um, Katie, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little confused in the permanent disposition and that it's it's held because with the organic remains, if they're in the scattering garden, they will just disperse into the, the ground. <coughs> There's really no container for them. And so how are we holding them? How are we holding that record that those organic remains of me, if I chose that, would exist anywhere in a year? 
Uh, I think that's a great question. We might want to see how um, the records are handled now for, let's say, um, if if ashes were scattered and and what the records would would okay, yes. sort of okay. indicate for that. But um, I, I hear the question, and I, okay. I assume there'd great. be some some parallel there. All right, thank but you. You do look like you have a witness that might be able to offer some help at um, on that particular issue. And that is. I don't see a hand. Chris. Chris, okay, sure. Um, so when an individual is cremated at a crematory, um, when you receive the ashes, um, there's a certificate of cremation that accompanies the ashes in their container. That um, certificate of cremation um, goes to the cemetery uh, if the family chooses a cemetery for final disposition. Um, that certificate of cremation goes to the sexton of that cemetery, and that is filed as a permanent record, just like a burial transit permit is in the town clerk of which the cemetery resides. Um, my presumption is, is that the same thing would happen if the um, NOR is uh, uh, placed in a cemetery for final disposition, um, that a certificate would be um, accompanying those remains and in turn would be filed there. So there'll always be a permanent record of where the disposition took place. Now you don't have that um, if ashes are scattered on you know, private property, the same thing with natural organic um, reduction. Um, there's no record of it, but if it goes into a public cemetery um, then that there's a there's a tracking mechanism because in Vermont cremation is considered final disposition whether you keep the ashes scatter the ashes or bury the ashes um, the the final disposition already took place. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Katie. Okay. <coughs> Brings us to section eleven sale of property for other than burial purposes and disposition of proceeds. Um, the language here is that either before or after the recording of the plot um, as provided, whenever it is determined that such lands acquired for cemetery purposes, except those acquired by condemnation proceedings, are unsuitable in the languages for burial purposes. Um, and the proposal here is to change that to the permanent disposition of human remains so that there would be um, again, recognition of other um, services provided. Um, such lands may be sold for purposes other than, instead of internment, again, permanent disposition. In section 12, um, a public highway or railroad shall not be laid through, instead of such a burial ground, a cemetery. So again, this raises the question um, that, that came up earlier, is what do we mean by a burial ground? Do we want to have a specific definition to mean something different from cemetery? And it's interesting here because the, you know, the heading, the um, section heading refers to a cemetery, but then the language in the section itself refers to a burial ground, which maybe indicates that the term was being used interchangeably, but if that is no longer the committee's intention, then that is, is something that the committee at least might want to flag for further discussion. Um, section 13, disposition of remains. Um, so we have um, language here that the permanent disposition of human remains shall be by, and then we have a list. Um, so we have in, internment, um, cremation, and then at the end of the list, there's a new subdivision E, which is natural organic reduction. Um, on line 11, that's more of a grammatical change instead of so long as provided, that's just to be consistent with our kind of drafting conventions. Subsection C, um, the existing language is no deposit of the remains of the human dead um, shall be made in a single chamber. So this, um, is rewritten so that with the exception of human remains processed by natural organic reduction, the permanent disposition of human remains shall not be made in a single chamber, vault or tomb, recognizing that 
um, remains processed by natural organic reduction are, are um, likely to be scattered. Uh, in subsection D, we have language that the remains of a human body after cremation and then adding in or natural organic reduction may be deposited in a scattering garden. That's an addition. Previously, it said um, only a niche of a columbarium or a crypt, a uh, mausoleum uh, buried or disposed of in any manner, not contrary to law. So that um, includes the language about the scattering garden. Section 14, again, right in the um, section heading is that same conversation we keep having. What do we mean by a burial ground? Um, or a cemetery, which is meant here. Um, so the, all of the changes in this section deal with that issue of burial ground and cemetery. So I will, maybe won't go through the details right now since we have a lot still to get through and just flag that that um, is a point that the committee wants to discuss further. Um, in section 15, here's another one. Line seven, in order to enter a graveyard. Graveyard is a new term um, that is, you know, in new term meaning, new term in this chapter. Um, it's not defined. What do we mean there? Do we mean a cemetery? And if so, we should be consistent. Is something else meant? Is it a burial ground um, that has a specific definition? So that is kind of related to this conversation of how, what label are we giving to things? Um, section 16, appropriations and regulations by towns. Um, a town may vote sums of money necessary for purchasing, holding, and keeping and repair suitable grounds and other conveniences, the existing language for burying the dead. So burying here is replaced with permanent disposition to reflect other types of services. Um, and then similarly on line two, that issue of burial grounds versus cemeteries. Section 17, uh, repair, current language when lots or walks in a public burial ground be, become unsightly with weeds, um, et cetera. So again, that issue, burial ground or cemetery or both. What, what is meant? Can just, um, can I, Representative Murphy, raising my hand, waving. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Trayano, can I just step in? I know we want to hold this conversation, but it's just a thought to put forward as it's being um, further delved. I, I see public quite often next to that burial ground that we're removing. And so that's why I think it could be critical. I think there are perchance private um, burial grounds or um, prior civilization burial grounds that we might want to also be considering. So anyway, just dropping that in. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> if you would keep that with your other piece, uh, Representative Murphy, that would be good to hold it as a marker for us. Yes. Okay, section 18, we have that same issue on line 17, um, 16, we're adding language um, when the select board or board of cemetery commissioners, um, and we have that change elsewhere, adding board of before, before cemetery commissioners. Section 19, uh, damages for lack of fence. Again, the issue of uh, cemetery and burial ground. Section 20, same issue. And again, adding in the language um, board of before cemetery commissioners. Section 21, um, same issue, burial grounds and cemeteries. Um, I will skip over this for now. Sounds like we'll be coming back to it. Uh, section 22, same issue. Section 23, same issue. Section 24. Same issue, also adding <laughs> board of before cemetery commissioners. <laughs> Section 25, yeah. same issue. <laughs> Section 26, adding um, 
after board, clarifying board of cemetery commissioners, the burial ground cemetery issue again comes up on line 14. And then on line 14, um, we talk about um, conveying lots to be used for burial and burial struck through replaced with permanent disposition. So it's a, a broader language, a broader terminology. Section 27. Um, again, we have the same issue with the burial grounds and cemeteries on line six. And on line seven, we're adding after board, clarifying board of cemetery commissioners. That same change is being made on line 14 in section 28. Um, we have the issue of cemeteries and burial grounds on line 15. And then um, on line 15, we're also um, replacing internment with permanent disposition. Uh, same thing is happening on 19, replacing burial with permanent disposition. Section nine, adding of cemetery commissioners after board. Um, the issue of burial grounds versus cemeteries. Um, section 30, same, um, burial, same issue with burial grounds and cemeteries. So I'll keep moving over that. Section 31, same issue. Section 32, um, same issue of burial grounds and cemeteries. Section 33, we have a grammatical change. And 15, um, we have language um, applicable to the uh, cemetery associations in respect to the sp sale of burial lots or burial spaces. And this would change it to the sale of lots or spaces for the permanent disposition of human remains. So again, um, using that broader language than just burial. Um, similar change being made in section 34, uh, removing burial. So it would be the sale of lots, spaces, crypts, or niches for the permanent disposition of human remains using the broader language. And then also, um, so we're talking about income, the income of the cemetery association derived from the sale of these lots shall be exclusively applied to paying for the land or for other cemetery property, um, preserving, protecting, embellishing the cemetery avenues, um, bu uh, buildings necessary for cemetery purposes and establishing a fund to care permanently for the cemetery. And then um, the repair and upkeep and um, scattering gardens is added here in addition um, to mausoleums, vaults, columbariums, crypts, niches therein. Um, on this last sentence, um, beginning on line 19, we're flipping um, the sentence again. Um, instead of no part of the proceeds from the sale of lots, spaces, crypts, um, this says that the proceeds from the sale of lots, spaces, crypts, or niches for the permanent disposition of human remains, again, getting rid of burials, um, shall not. So flipping that sentence to be more consistent with our drafting practices. Um, and then again, the same change that we've been seeing on line five, instead of conveying burial lots, we're conveying spaces, crypts, and niches for the permanent disposition of human remains. Section 35, um, we're seeing that change again, replacing um, the specificity of the type of lots or spaces um, and indicating that they're for the disposition of human remains. Section 36, dissolution of cemetery associations. Um, again, we have that issue, burial grounds and cemeteries and what, what is the correct terminology. Section 37, that same issue. Section 38, that same issue. Um, again, on page 35, section 39 is the same issue. And section 40, enlargement of cemeteries by associations. You have the issue of burial ground and cemetery. And again, that kind of discrepancy between the lead in language using cemetery, but the text itself using burial ground and what is meant. Um, 
So the committee has flagged that and section 41 um, is the same issue. So we've flagged that. Okay. So now we're transitioning to the final chapter. We've moved out of the cemetery chapter and we're moving into a chapter um, in Title 26, which is our professional regulation chapter. And um, Vice Chair, I see that we have a, another question. Yes, we yeah. do. I see uh, Representative Kowacki. Thank you. And I apologize for asking so many questions, but you know, this is uh, a new area for me. I, I love being in the House General. But um, <laughs> so in this particular section, you've been walking us through, Katie. There is, there has been discovered that there was a black burial ground in Heinsburg that is now completely into in the woods. That there's a few scattered grave stones, very few, but most of it's completely broken down. So in this chapter, would that mean that the town of Heinsburg is responsible for the upkeep of that particular plot of land? I'm not prepared to answer that question right now. I could I could do a little bit more research, but I think it depends um, on when the, the establishment of the cemetery, who had been, had anybody been responsible for it? And up until what date, I think those issues sort of matter in making that determination. Okay. Um, uh, but I'm, you, I'm happy to, to, to look into that for you or no, to no, I'll, 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 a little bit more research. Good, I, I'll, I'll get some more data about, about that. Um, and then the, the other issue, which is earlier on, is cremation defined? It's a defined term. Okay, because we I, I, I spent time in Tibet and in India, and I witnessed many open air cremations or when some of the monks at the, the monasteries were cremated, there was, a, there was a, a, an enclosed thing, but the whole community gathered as the body was burned. So would those kinds of things fit in our definition of cremation? Well, let me flip back to the definition. My cremation, it means the reducing of the remains of deceased persons by the use of retorts or alkaline hydrolysis to cremated remains and the disposal thereof. Um, and then it says, and not in any other manner, not contrary to law. So what I would say is the statutory language is not restrictive, but I imagine that there could be some um, like industry practices that, um, that might be in play. Um, and I also don't know if, for example, OPR has any specific rules governing this. Um, so while the statutory language itself might be open or, or less prescriptive, it's not the only set of regulations in right. play. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, um, any other questions from the room? I can't see you. Okay, Katie, if you would continue. Okay, it looks like I have six minutes to finish up this last chapter. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Okay, so title um, 26 is our professional regulation. Um, we have definitions. This is existing law. Um, crematory establishment is a business here um, registered with the office, um, meaning OPR. Um, and then we also, sorry, um, office conducted at a specific street address or location devoted to the disposition of human remains by means of cremation, alkaline hydrolysis, or another type of human uh, reduction acceptable to the director, meaning the director of OPR. Um, we have definitions of funeral directors, also a licensed person, a funeral establishment. Um, the practice of funeral services is defined all existing law. Um, and then new definitions to reflect um, to reflect this sort of new type of service is the natural organic reduction. It, uh, we're cross-referencing the statute we looked at earlier, and then a natural organic reduction facility. You'll see that this definition sort of um, mirrors um, the crematory establishment 
definition, meaning a business registered with the office um, conducted at a specific street address or location devoted to the disposition of human bodies by means of natural organic reduction. Uh, notwithstanding this section, crematory establishments and natural organic reduction facilities and their personnel may engage in the listed activities in subdivision A6 below. So again, that sense of parity. Um, specifically, personnel at a crematory establishment or a natural organic reduction facility may. So this is what they may do. They may provide for the disposition of dead human bodies by cremation or natural organic reduction as applicable. Um, they may enter into contracts without taking prepaid funds for the provision of dispositions by cremation or natural organic reduction as applicable. They may arrange, direct, or perform the removal or transportation of a dead human body, provided that removals are performed by a licensed removal personnel, um, et cetera. Section 43, um, advisor, appointees, director duties, and rules. So here we have language that the Secretary of State is to appoint four people for five-year staggered terms to serve as the Secretary's advisors in matters related to funeral services. Three of the appointments uh, goes into terms. Uh, appointees shall include three licensed funeral directors one of whom is licensed in bomber, one of whom has a train, training or experience in the operation of a crematory establishment or natural organic uh, reduction facility. So that makes it possible for somebody providing this service to be part of this advisory group. Um, the director shall, meaning the director of OPR, shall adopt rules regarding minimum standards for crematory establishments and natural organic reduction facilities. So again, getting back to Representative Klacky's question about you know, what standards are in place for where a cremation might occur. This language in existing law is um, direct, directing the director to adopt rules regarding crematory establishments. So there might be some parameters there. And this language would further direct similar rules for natural organic reduction facilities. Section 44, um, inspection of premises. This gives the director um, the ability to inspect funeral establishments, crematory establishments, and a natural organic reduction facility. Each funeral establishment, crematory establishment, and natural organic reduction facility is to be inspected at least once every two years. Um, and inspections of the establishments and facilities to reflect natural organic um, reduction facilities. Um, shall be provided by the director. Uh, section 45 has to do with licensure requirements. So a person, partnership, corporation, corporation, association, or other organization shall not open or maintain a crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility unless the establishment is licensed. And then in subsection D, except as otherwise permitted, a person employed by a funeral establishment crematory establishment or a natural organic reduction facility as not to perform a removal unless registered with the office. Um, and then we have qualifications. Subsection D applies to crematory establishments or natural organic reduction facilities. A person, partnership, corporation, association, or other organization desiring to operate a crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility is to apply in writing to the director for a license. Again, this is existing law. We're just adding the natural um, organic reduction facility to the list, people who have to seek this license. Um, in subsection E, instead of just having this apply to crematory personnel, this applies to personnel of a crematory <laughs> establishment or natural organic reduction facility. Again, a person who desires to engage in the direct handling, processing, identification, cremation, or natural organic reduction of dead human remains within a licensed crematory establishment or natural organic reduction facility is to register with the office and pay a fee. So we're just adding this new service to the list. Katie? Mm, yes, you have to go. Uh, yeah, I hate to do this. Uh, we're, we have made better progress than I imagined we would. Uh, but um, I would like to get folks a break before we go on the floor. Sure. I appreciate it. So I've had 43 out of 50 pages. And, uh, 
like mostly language changes from here on out. So. Yep. Your last section um, is just fees to parallel what's happening for um, the crematory um, license and facilities. Okay, and it uh, should be able to uh, have you available uh, in the near future. No, you. <laughs> sure. Okay, who's who's it, Matt? Okay, so witnesses, um, um, uh, you have agreed that it would be, yeah, it's very good. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> we can see, every, I can see everyone. Um, uh, thank you. You have all agreed that you would be available to come back and, uh, and uh, uh, give us some testimony about this uh, bill. It's a very interesting bill, and I'm sure uh, all of you have uh, very constructive and uh, important things to consider in this bill. Uh, and I was glad to hear of the support that we uh, have here in the room. So. Um, on that, um, thank you for coming. We will be in touch with all of you, uh, the witnesses, and I'm sorry that we could not take you today. Um, I'm sorry for any inconvenience, uh, but again, we look forward to your input on this bill. Um, and anything else from committee? No, John? thank you. Thank you, Katie. Uh, a, reminder, uh, a reminder.